Hey viewers, I'm Jim Zub. I've been writing stories for Marvel for almost 10 years on titles like The Avengers, Thunderbolts, and Black Panther and the Agents of Wakanda. If you're watching this video, you might have dreams of creating your own comic stories, whether that's at Marvel or just on your own. Either way, it's important to understand how these stories are put together so you can maximize their impact with the reader. This course has been put together to educate artists and give them a solid foundation in comic book storytelling. A lot of these lessons are understandably focused on the visuals, how to draw, best practices for each page and panel, and common pitfalls to avoid. But at the heart of everything we do is that story. No matter how good a story I write, if the art team doesn't know how it all fits together, then the final result won't have the impact that we all want. Okay, so with all that preamble out of the way, let's make some stories in the Mighty Marvel manner. Marvel superheroes are more than just a code name, a snazzy costume, or a set of superpowers. These are characters with strong motivations, well-thought-out emotions, and deep-rooted flaws that make them empathetic and engaging to our readers. A great Marvel story weaves in elements of who a character is and what motivates them into the challenges that they're about to overcome. All right, before we get that specific, there's a basic storytelling structure that all writers and artists need to understand. It's a simple three-part story format that gives readers everything they need to know while also keeping them entertained. Don't get me wrong, this isn't the only way to tell a story, but it's an extremely effective method for setting up solid narrative. Let's go through the story structure and see exactly how it works. Part one's called our introduction, and surprising no one, it's the foundation that everything else rests upon. In the introduction, we need to establish key points of information in order for our readers to understand the story. Who is this story about? Who are our main characters? If it's a Spider-Man story and his name's on the cover, it's pretty self-evident that he's the most important person here. But there's other secondary and supporting characters in the cast as well. We might see Mary Jane, Aunt May, or even J. Jonah Jameson. All these characters need to be introduced at some point if they're going to be part of this story. What are our main characters capable of? Are their powers and abilities obvious? Or do we need to demonstrate them in the opening scenes? Even if you're writing the X-Men or the Avengers, it's still really helpful to show what each character can do so the reader's prepared for what might come next. Don't forget, comics are a visual medium. That means we can use the art to showcase these superpowers in some really cool ways. Even if a writer doesn't specifically call out these visual moments in the script, the artist can show what these characters are capable of. Where is the story taking place? Is it a location that we need to establish, or are there any details that are going to come up later? When is the story happening? Is this current, or does it take place at some other point in time? Why is our main character doing what they're doing? Is there a clear sense of purpose and focus carrying us into the story? Some of these questions can be answered almost instantly. I mean, right on the first page, if you want to show heroes using their powers in an iconic locale. Other times we might want to stretch out the introduction and leave out some information intentionally in order to set up a mystery for our readers. What's most important about the introduction is that it provides enough information and momentum for the story to keep readers interested and engaged. At the end of introduction, we usually have something we call an inciting incident, and that thrusts us into act two, conflict. Just like introduction, conflict is exactly what it sounds like, a struggle placed between our heroes and their goals. The most obvious kind of conflict in a Marvel superhero story is a battle between heroes and villains. It might seem obvious, but it's a well-established form of external physical conflict. You heard me right, I said external and physical. That's because there's other types of conflicts as well. Many types of conflict are external, but some of them are also internal. Characters can battle against their personal limitations, their fears, assumptions, or other emotional turmoil. Comics have a lot of unique qualities when it comes to showcasing internal conflict. We've got the visuals so we can see the emotions on their faces and their body language. We've also got captions or thought balloons so we can literally see their thoughts and understand what motivates them from scene to scene. I know this sounds crazy, but not every conflict needs to be physical. Some challenges are social. That means characters are going to negotiate, impress, or outmaneuver through situations rather than just physically fighting every single time. Most stories longer than a page or two tend to have multiple types of conflict all happening at the same time. A classic Spider-Man story might have our web-headed hero trying to stop Dr. Octopus's evil plans. But, at the same time, Peter Parker is also struggling with relationship problems, financial issues, self-doubt, and keeping his secret identity safe from friends and family who are going to be endangered if it's ever revealed to the public at large. These various forms of conflict keep the story moving, and they also keep our readers guessing, wondering what's going to happen next. 
New challenges arrive that logically flow from what's come before and, with each turn of the page, our story should build in terms of intensity and excitement. Threats get bigger, tension rises, and our reader wonders how it's all gonna wrap up. All this drama we've assembled builds towards something we call the climax. The climax of the story is when we finally see the resolution of the core conflict that we set up at the start. Readers finally find out what the results will be as we head into our final phase, resolution. This is the third and final part of our classic three-act story structure. Here's where we see the results of our story. Challenges are overcome and villains are defeated, but it doesn't always have to wrap up nice and simple. Questions may remain and some of our conflicts, especially internal ones, might carry forward into future stories. In any case, there needs to be some kind of satisfying conclusion to the conflict we created at the start and a sense of closure so our reader knows this story was worth following from start to finish. There are many different structures used to tell stories, but this classic three-part structure is one of the most common and easy to adapt. It works well for superheroic action adventure, comedy, romance, horror, or even intrigue. It can be used to tell a story full of hope or one filled with tragedy. If you haven't worked with this kind of story structure stuff before, it can be helpful to do some extra research and get yourself into story mode. What I recommend is that you reread some of your favorite comic book stories or watch a movie or TV show, and then jot down some notes about the three-act structure. Where do you find the introduction, the conflict, and the resolution? By analyzing how that structure informs other people's work, it'll be easier to make it work in your story concepts as well. The more you look for these kinds of underlying story systems in popular media, the more you'll realize how common it is and the many ways they can be used to tell different kinds of stories. Our job as storytellers is to engage and entertain the audience. I know it's tempting to want to create a story with dozens of characters and hundreds of plot lines, but some of the most powerful stories in the Marvel Universe are the ones that are simple and iconic. A straightforward story full of appealing ideas will work way better than an overcomplicated plot that is so dense readers struggle to follow it. Once conflict is underway, the reader should know what the main characters are doing and why. Goals and stakes need to be clear, otherwise it'll be hard for them to stay intrigued and keep reading through to the end. Clarity in story is just like clarity in art. If you overcomplicate a drawing or a painting, it can look messy and unclear despite all the hard work that's been put into it. There's confidence in a story simply set and well executed. Some of Marvel's most iconic characters are easy to summarize because their core concepts are so strong. Transformed by an accident in outer space into something more than human, four intrepid explorers vow to use their fantastic powers to help mankind chart a path into a better future and to keep our planet safe. They're a family that are bound by fate set against dire threats and mysteries of the unknown. Caught in the heart of a gamma bomb explosion, Dr. Bruce Banner finds himself changed into a powerful and distorted reflection of his darkest emotions and rage, constantly searching for a balance between the monster and the man while others hunt him down for his crimes or seek access to the incredible power he has unlocked within himself. Once you have an idea for your story, make sure you're planning it out in terms of structure. What needs to be established for the introduction? What is the inciting incident? What kind of conflict is taking place? How will the conflict grow and how will it reach our climax? And then how's it gonna be resolved when we get to the end? Let me show you how this works with one of my own Marvel stories. Uncanny Avengers number 28 came out in 2017 and it's part of a larger storyline called Stars and Garters. It carries several character subplots on from earlier issues, but the majority of its character conflict is really all quite self-contained. So it's a really good example for analysis. The core of this issue is a character study of Hank McCoy and Simon Williams, also known as The Beast and Wonder Man. At the time this story came out, these two heroes had been through a lot of ups and downs and hadn't seen each other in a long time. I wanted to show that despite all the changes that had happened to them and the many difficult situations they dealt with, deep down they were still good friends and capable heroes. So with that as the overarching goal for the issue, I broke down the specifics into a three-act story structure. Introduction. I wanted to show Hank and Simon meeting somewhere simple and unassuming, a setting where they'd feel comfortable reconnecting and talking about all their troubles. Two friends commiserating over their past and their present, which also helps readers get a feel for where they've been. We see a flashback montage of recent events along with their particular point of view, giving us insight into where their priorities are and what they're struggling with. It's all expositional in nature 
but it's delivered in a compact way thanks to the wonderful artwork of Sean Isaac and Tom Rabonvillain. There are multiple instances of conflict in this issue, and we dive right into it with Beast and Wonder Man discussing their past problems and their desire to do better in the future. Hank feels like he's lost sight of what it is to be a good guy. Compromises he's made as of late have allowed evil to flourish on his watch, despite all his intelligence and his ambition to always do the right thing. Simon took a vow of pacifism to keep violent tendencies from his past at bay, but now he wonders if that was the right choice or just a way for him to avoid the responsibility that comes with his phenomenal strength. He's also really at odds with where he stands with Wanda Maximoff. Before he disappeared, they'd rekindled their relationship, but now that he's back, they haven't even met up or talked about anything, and he's getting worried. Hank and Simon have drifted from who they want to be, and that's the crux of our conflict. They need clarity about the bad choices they've made, and they need to resolve themselves to make better ones in the future. It's the kind of thing every one of us can relate to despite the extraordinary circumstances these heroes find themselves in. And it's that extra touch of humanity and empathy that makes a Marvel story so special to the readers. Don't worry, this issue isn't just talking heads and superhero psychoanalysis. Their conversation gets interrupted by wailing police sirens and, moments later, they see Whirlwind, a classic Avengers supervillain, making a getaway with his goons in tow as police cars wildly chase them through the streets of New York. It's a perfect chance for our pals to get back to some old school superheroics in the same way they want to reconnect to that better part of themselves that they remember from when they were on the Avengers. It's a physical conflict that represents the core theme of our story. We then cut over to Rogue, Wasp, and the Human Torch in another location. Even though this side scene is not a direct part of the Beast and Wonder Man plotline, there are parallel ideas going on here. It's all about taking responsibility and doing the right thing even when it sucks. This scene advances character subplots while also carrying momentum from our main story. Resolution. Back to the action, Beast and Wonder Man use their unique abilities to defeat Whirlwind and do it without anyone getting seriously injured. Wonder Man even maintains his pacifist approach to life, protecting people and helping Beast stop a runaway bank truck without even throwing a single punch. The physical stakes of the fight are low compared to some epic battles and cosmic struggles that we've seen in other Marvel stories, but what this represents in terms of emotional conflict still gives us a climax here. Hank and Simon know they can do better in their lives and they're motivated to keep trying. Their friendship is as strong as ever before and they're still the heroes we know and love. In simple 3x story structure terms, I introduced the characters and their problems, showed clear conflict, and then hopefully paid those off in ways that are both memorable and entertaining. The final scene in Uncanny Avengers number 28 introduces our next major conflict, and that's brought about by a stray magic spell from Dr. Voodoo. It was a way for me to shift some Act 1 style information to this issue and introduce a new conflict so I'd have more pages for super heroic action available next issue. The three act structure here is still intact, I just moved it around a bit to keep the pacing fresh, and also keep readers excited about what comes next using a powerful cliffhanger. 3X story structures are not a formula and they can't solve every problem, but they're a really potent tool for you to be able to create stories and deliver them in a way that readers can understand. When you start out as a writer, you need to make distinct choices when you're thinking about structure and how you present this stuff on the page. The more you write your own stories, the easier it's going to be to think instinctively about underlying story structure. The goal here is to improve your craft without limiting your creativity. Like any skill, it'll take time and practice, so the sooner you start, the sooner it'll all come together for you. Once you're comfortable with the basics, then you can try more complex storylines or more ambitious structures without ever losing track of what matters most, entertaining your audience in the mighty Marvel manner. In Marvel's The Art of Storytelling, Jim Zub covers story structure, ideation, and tips that will help you make more compelling stories. Beyond that, we have way more lessons that will teach you every aspect of the comic making pipeline. Check it out at proca.com slash marvel.